I can only spare you 10 minutes, Mr. Crenshaw, said Gwen Sparbini, the billionaire actress model turned venture capitalist. She studied me from her side of an antique desk, rumored to have been constructed in Tibet by blind idiot savants using tools derived from yak bones. A piece of furniture worth more than the combined total of all my outstanding graduate school loans. Funny thing about student loans, you can keep deferring them so long as you stay in school. Ask me how I know. I had three masters and two doctoral degrees, and though I had initially spread my loans out across multiple financial institutions, a plan conceptually not unlike using one credit card to pay the minimum amount due on another, the banks had outsmarted me. They'd bartered and traded my debt among themselves, consolidating it under a single lender until the enormity of what I owed had spurred them into action. My educational debt was coming due. But depending on how the next 10 minutes went, I could theoretically leave it all behind and be set for life. Theoretically. Which was all well and good, but people didn't invest in theories. They all wanted applications, products. That's where the money was. 10 minutes to change my life, assuming I could get Gwen Svarbini on board. No problem, I said. And please, Call me Leo. I placed a bowl of pale gunk upon her legendary desk, following it a moment later with a modified television remote control. Sparbini didn't exactly roll her eyes, but I caught her glancing at her watch already. So, pitch me. What am I looking at? Weak old tapioca? Mnemonic enhancers. I indicated in the bowl, attempting a flourish but only matter, managed a poor flutter of jazz hands. It looks like runny paste. Kind of. It's a ready to serve edible slurry that costs less than a penny to mass produce and provides all the nutrients in a textbook FDA balanced meal. It could end world hunger. That earned me an arch of her left eyebrow. One of my doctorates is in development and nutrition, I said. The other is in cognitive science and problem solving. How's it taste? Oh, absolutely terrible. Like runny paste on a good day. You want me to give you $18 million to mass produce fall tasting paste? No, the slurry is already available. Its utility is completely stalled because the flavor is so horrible and all attempts to mask it failed. That's where my research comes in. I'm listening, but you're down to nine minutes, Mr. Crenshaw. Leo, please. Okay, some background. Sensory memory is both bottom up and top down. Stop, go back. I don't know what that means. No problem, I said. What's your favorite food? She favored me with a dreamy smile. I love Coco Van. It was the same answer she'd given during a Forbes interview months before. And the reason I'd worked so hard to pitch to her over other potential backers. Great. So when you sit down to a plate of Coco Van and take that first bite, sensory receptors in your mouth and nose work to tell you what it tastes like. That's bottom up. Sensory details from the food go up to your brain. She nodded. I am with you so far. But there's also top down. Probably from the first moment you looked at a menu and ordered the Coco Van, or even before if you'd been anticipating ordering it, your brain was accessing memories from previous meals of the same dish. Those meals become active, and that activation helps to define the experience when you start eating. That's top down. Interesting. What does this have to do with paste? You are down to eight minutes. I picked up the remote control. This device can scan your brain's magnetic fields in real time to record the mind's sensory memory pattern while you think about your favorite food. Mixed in amidst the nutrient slurry is a liquid substrate supporting thousands of biodegradable microtransceivers with a 24-hour lifespan. Think of it as a kind of high-tech sauce. The memory pattern of your favorite food can be imprinted on those transceivers. They in turn impose that same pattern of activation when you eat something else. 
Something like runny paste? Exactly. Her eyebrows rose with doubt. Seems more than a bit improbable. Well, they say the proof of the pudding is in the eating. It holds true for Kokovan, too. Hmm. You mean to do this now? She glanced at the remote I'd placed alongside the bowl. How long do you need to calibrate your device? Oh, just two minutes, Miss Svarbini. Relax, let your eyes close, and think about Coco Van. She shrugged, settled back in her chair, and closed her eyes. I pressed the reset button on the remote and aimed its laser pointer at the gustatory cortex of my prospective investor, and waited. After a minute, 48 seconds, a green light came on, indicating it had a lock on the pattern that defined her experience of eating her favorite food, Coco Van. I aimed my device at the bowl, pressed another button, and transmitted the pattern to the microtransceivers in the edible sludge. You can open your eyes now. Ready to taste the best Coco Van you've ever had? Her dubious expression came back as she looked first at me and then at the bowl. Even if you somehow recreate the flavor, the mouthfeel is going to be different. Your paste has a totally different consistency. That's true, but the top-down memory will override the bottom-up tasting. I've still got five minutes, so go on. Try it. I withdrew a prepackaged plastic spoon from my shirt pocket and handed it to her. She didn't want to eat it. I could see it in her eyes. Maybe it was only my reminding her that I still had several minutes left that got her to unwrap the spoon, scoop up some goop, and bring it to her lips. But that was all I needed. Good Lord, this is incredible. As good as Chef Antoine's. And you can do this with anything? Well, Beef Wellington? Masala Dosas? Veal Oscar? Actually, no. What do you mean? Why not? There is something about the wiring of human brain. Only certain dishes produce sufficiently vivid memory patterns. I can't manage any of the ones you name. But it's not really a problem. That leaves plenty. Coco Van, Doro Wet, Chicken Korma, and many others. I don't understand. Why those? I shrugged. They all taste like chicken. 